everybody. I want to talk to you about continuous uniform distributions. They're very similar to discrete uniform distributions that we talked about previously, um, but this one is continuous. So let's uh, let's see what they look like. So let me uh, let me share my whiteboard where I've done everything. All right, Ooh, that's the that's the last screen actually. All right, so here is the basic idea of uniform distributions. So just like um, discrete uniform distributions all the outcomes between two values are equally likely. Now, in this case, when we say all outcomes are equally likely, we don't mean like all the integer outcomes, we mean all of them. So for instance, if I would, were to say, pick a number between zero and 100, right? I could get zero or I could get one or two or three up to 100, but I could also get all of the decimals. So I can get like one and a half and 1.1956. Right, that's another that's another possible outcome. So it's everything in a range, not just the integers. That's uh, that's the difference here. But other than that, it functions largely the same. Right, that when we see the graphs, they're going to look pretty much the same. Uh, it just it'll be a, a straight line instead of a bunch of bars that are all the same height. Um, the the two boundaries, uh, the left and right boundaries are are called A and B, with A being less than B. Um, and oh, and every outcome that's not between those is impossible. So for instance, if I pick a random number between zero and 100, anything between zero and 100 is equally likely, but 101 has, is impossible, right? I can't get that, so that's, that's outside the, the bounds. Um, the classic example here is a random number generator like I was talking about. It turns out there are actually a few things that can be modeled with uniform, uh, uniform continuous distributions. Not not a ton, but uh, it's a good first example because everything is so simple. Like if you look in your calculator, you'll find that there is no uniform CDF or uniform PDF because there's no point. It's all it's just too easy. Uh, no need. There's no need for an entire calculator function for it. So let's uh, let's see an example uh, or uh, sort of the classic example. So here's your classic uniform distribution. Notice that I've got my two bounds A and B. Everything in everything in the the middle here is equally likely. That's why the horizontal line, right? That how tall it is, is the probability. And so every one of these things is the same height, or it would be if I could draw straight. Um, we would notate this thing, UAB, with, with a capital U and then in parentheses, A comma B, telling you what the bounds are. U is for uniform, of course. And the area under this is one, as always, because it has to be 100%. And just like I was trying to emphasize very hard uh, for the last couple of topics, Area equals probability. That's the, the, the visualization tool that we're going to be using for the rest of the course. So that, you know, we're going to do it here. That's why we're, it's actually why I'm talking about the topic is because I want you to, to get used to that idea. So with that in mind, I do want to mention this mark. So this is supposed to be at the, the height of the uh, of the, the horizontal line here. So I want to figure out what this is in terms of A and B. And the reason uniform distribution math is so easy is that areas are all rectangles, right? This thing is a rectangle. <laughs> and we know how to find rect uh, area of a rectangle, right? Area equals base times height. And I just realized I'm using A and B again. This The, the B here next to the H is, is not the, the B from over here. It's a word that means, or it's a, it's a uh, abbreviation for base. So we have base times height. So the length of the base here is the distance between A and B. And the distance between A and B is B minus A. And if that, if that doesn't immediately jump right into your brain, think about it in terms of numbers, right? Like let's say A was one and B was seven. How far apart are A and B? Six, right? You do that by doing seven minus one. If A was 100 and B was 250, how far apart are A and B? They're 150 apart because that is the difference between the two of them. So the distance here, and I didn't leave myself much room, but the, the distance here, from here to here, is B minus A. And if I, if I call this thing uh, height, right, then the thing that I know is that the height times B minus A is one. Has to be, because that thing is a rectangle and its area is one. We know that because that's how we're setting it up. So what I can do here is this. I can do some somewhat clever algebra. Divide both sides by B minus A. We get that the height is one over B minus A. So no matter what A and B are, 
the height there is one over the length of the base. So if A and B are one and seven, and the base is therefore six, then this height is one sixth. And that is, uh, that's always how you find the height of a uniform distribution. All right, let's do it, see an actual example now. All right, I've got a, a computer generating a, ran, generating a random number between zero and 10, and I wanna find all of these things. Probability that X is greater than five, probability that X is greater than or equal to five, which we're gonna, I'm gonna make a point there. And then the, these other probabilities. So um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's go find those things. And I'm going to find them by shading on a graph. And that is going to be a recurring theme in this course that I'm going to draw the graph of the thing that I'm, uh, of the distribution that I'm using for my probability. And I'm gonna shade in the area that I'm looking for just to sort of cement in my mind where that area is. So probability that X is greater than five. So here we go. I've got uh, my, this is a U010 because I am picking a random number between zero and 10. And uh, five is in the middle here. And I wanna find the probability that X is greater than five. So all this area over here that I am putting in pink. <clears throat> and so the way I'm gonna find that area, um, I'll, I'll do it two ways. I'll, I'll show you how I would do it, uh, or, or how you can do it uh, mathematically. Probably that X is greater than five is, well, that is a rectangle just like every probability is gonna be in here, is gonna be rectangular. The base is five units long, right? Five to 10 is five units and the height is one tenth. So it is five times one over 10 or five over 10, which is a half. There you go, that is that, uh, that, is that probability. Let's go write that down on the previous page. One half. All right, now I wanna talk about probability that X is greater than or equal to five. So when I go over here and look at my picture, the only difference between probability that X is greater than five and the probability that X is greater than or equal to five is this line right at five, right? That's the only thing that's different, right? And don't think, by the way, don't think that this means X is at least six and this means X is at least five. No, no, no. This doesn't mean X is at least six because this is continuous. So, it can, so it's every number between five and 10, including all the decimals, right? This isn't even X is, X is 5.0001 or, or bigger, right? Because that's, you can get closer to five than that. So the only difference between this and this is the line right at five. And the line right at five has no area because it doesn't have any width. Therefore, it has no probability. And so these two things are the same. They're the same because this is a continuous distribution. And that's always true in a continuous distribution is if you're using greater than or greater than or equal to, the probability that you're gonna get is the same in both cases. So this one is also a half. And you can actually make a pretty good argument that this is sort of a breakdown in, um, in probability theory in the sense that if you were picking a random number between zero and 10, you have to get one of them. So it can't be impossible to get five. That is a possible outcome. So we can't really have zero probability. And so this is a place where the, the, there's a slight disconnect between math and things that actually practically happen in the real world, but it's so minuscule that it's not even worth worrying about. So we're not gonna worry about it, right? Once you take calculus, specifically calculus two, you'd have a, a, a more, a, a greater grasp of why this happens. And we could talk more about um, sort of the, the connection between reality and this continuous function we're approximating with. But for now, we're just gonna disregard it. I'm just gonna say the error is, you know, the potential error there is so minuscule that we're, we're going to ignore it. So that's the point I wanted to make here. Greater than, greater than or equal to, effectively the same thing in continuous probabilities, even though they don't technically mean the same thing in the real world. Similarly with uh, less than, less than. Two. So this guy is also a half and that's, that's why I, that's why I made these two things so similar so I can talk about that. Okay, probability that X is between two and seven. So bigger than two and less than seven. So it, you can read this 
two less than X, less than seven, but that's awkward and does not do a good job of conveying the actual idea that you want to convey with this statement, which is that X is between two and seven. So that's how I'd say it. Probability that X is between two and seven. All right, so if we go look at that error, I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this. I like the eraser in Zoom, it's nice. Um, all right, so the probability that X is between two and seven. So we're gonna go from two here, two up to seven, seven, and then we're gonna you know, shade that in in pink because that's my, my shade and area color. And we're gonna find it the same way. So we're gonna say, well, this base is five and the height is one tenth. So this is five times one tenth again, it, it's a half. So probability that X is between two and seven is also a half. And the point I wanted to make here, so one, it's a half, right? That, that's easy enough to calculate. The other point I wanted to make is that what I effectively did going between like five to 10 to two to seven, all I did was take that area and slide it to the left. It's a homework problem where that, that thought might, uh, might help you. Um, but it ended up being the same, right? So because the height is the same everywhere, we can kind of just slide probabilities around it. All you really care about when calculating the probability is what the base is because the height's the same for everything or the height's the same everywhere on this graph. Right. And so the base is the thing is, is the thing that can change. So here the base is the same. Right. So that's uh, that's two to five or excuse me, it's two to seven. Base of five gives you another probability of a half. All right. Let's do one where the answer isn't a half. How's that? Are we going to do X less than one or greater than nine? So let's see what that looks like on here. Let's uh, get back to my eraser. We're just going to erase all those things. Maybe these to give me some room to write. All right, um, whoop. here's a little annoying. It makes you turn off the whiteboard every time you wanna <laughs> get your pencil back. So less than one or greater than nine. And remember that or means that we are considering either of them as equally valid. So we, we have to account for both. And so it is this area, X less than one, and then this area, X greater than nine that I'm looking to find. And I, I think it is, relatively easy to figure out what to do here. I'm just gonna find both areas and add them together, right? And so both of them have a base of one. The left one is from zero to one, and the right one is from nine to 10. Um, but they're, they're both a base of one. So this is probability that X is less than one or greater than nine is, well, it's, it's a 10th for the last one, one times a 10th and a 10th for the right one which is of course two tenths or one fifth. That's it, that's how you do it. Just add up all the shaded areas if you have more than one. So this guy is one over five. You're welcome to do these in decimals if you want, right? 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.2 if you would like. Uh, and that's pretty much it for uniform distributions. There's really not much to say about them. They're They're pretty, straightforward like they're they really are the easiest example pretty much and so uh, yeah i, I just kind of want to end there although i do actually want to say one more thing about uniform distributions um both of my examples here have been on the the positive side of the axis and they don't they don't have to be you can certainly have negative uh you can certainly have distributions that go negative as well right so i could i could have one that uh looks like this maybe right so B, or you could have one that's entirely negative, All right? So this this is a perfectly legitimate uniform distribution. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, I just realized that my examples didn't uh, didn't have an example like this, and sometimes people think that if I don't include an example, that means it's not possible, and that's not the case at all. So uh, you can have a uniform distribution that goes negative or is entirely negative. There's no need to have it all be on the positive side of the y-axis. And that is the last thing I wanted to say about uniform distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. All right. I will see you guys in the next one.